Hello, welcome back. It's pancake day, which is honestly one of my favorite holidays, if you can even call it that. I know there are religious connotations. I'm not religious, but I do celebrate pancake day. There will be a recipe for pancakes in the description box. These are lemon pancakes. I've added some lemon zest in there. And instead of using apple cider vinegar for the buttermilk, I've also used lemon juice. So they will be very lemony. And I've also got some very oxidized mashed banana that I just need to eat. So that is going in there as well, which might ruin the consistency, but we will find out. I just missed the flip. Oh my god. I'm currently dressed as polyester because I'm about to film a polyester video. Um, polyester is a character. She's called Polly Esther, like polyester. Um, and I'm wearing this very old sequin crop top, which I've had for a very long time and I really love actually. And then this secondhand suit, which I'm sure you've seen a million times. If you don't know what polyester is or who I'm talking about, I've pinned a video on my Instagram for you to watch at your leisure. But speaking of suits, it actually leads me really nicely on to talking about this month's Sky Cinema film. Huge thank you to Sky for sponsoring this part of the video. I recently watched a film called The Independent and I had to watch it because it stars Jodie Tanner-Smith, who I absolutely love. I think she's such a brilliant actor and she is the lead role in this film. So to give you a little bit of a synopsis, this film starts during the final few weeks of the most consequential presidential election campaign in US history. So the US is either giving that presidential slot to Anne Dowd's character, which would make her the first ever woman president, or finally break out of the country's two-party gridlock with its first ever independent candidate who was played by John Cena. Now, Jodie Tanner-Smith plays a highly ambitious journalist slash reporter, and she gets the opportunity to work with her hero, a veteran political columnist played by Brian Cox, who you might recognise from the TV series Succession. So it's about this very important presidential campaign, a conspiracy that Jodie is looking into and kind of spearheading. And I would say that this film is much more fun than I thought it would be, because I think often with kind of like information dense political type films they can be quite difficult to follow but I found this one really really easy to follow. Jodie Turner Smith's character is called Alicia and something that I was really struck by in this film was the way she dresses because she really veers towards suits and breeches and it feels very very intentional that she is dressing towards uh, clothes that we would more traditionally associate with menswear and I have to say this is something that as I get older, I'm just drawn more and more towards men's clothing. I find them so comfortable. I find them really long lasting. I love the tailoring of them. And a tip actually when it comes to sourcing secondhand clothing would be to never rule out the menswear section. Honestly, you can find such good gems in there. But to summarise, this is a really fun film and it's an easy watch. And Jodie Tanner-Smith is honestly just like... I love her. It's really interesting to see her play around with different characters. Like she never seems to play the same character twice. So I'm very much looking forward to following her journey at length. And I really hope you enjoy this film. Let me know what you think in the description box. Today is Saturday and I'm about to head to North London to meet up with my friend Zenab. We're gonna go to an exhibition at the Crafts Council, which we've been talking about going to for many months. And today is the day. After that, I'm going to my friend Lottie's baby shower, but not baby shower because she doesn't want to receive any gifts until baby has arrived. So it's like a pre-baby lunch. Like we're just, this is kind of like, but I'm just freestyling, baby. <laughs> <laughs> just... Um, not like a friend of mine, but like, you know, and my, a guy had basically hooked up with a very drunk girl mm. and a different guy had found out about it. Fun. Amongst us girls, we were also like, ugh, that's not really cool what he did. Yeah. It's just how much censure you faced then in 2009 is very different from 2019. But like on a gut level, men knew that wasn't okay. Little outfit of the day for you. I'm wearing just a plain black body with my vintage 
uh, necklace. This cardigan, which you've seen a million times. These thrifted trousers, my secondhand boots. I'm also gonna take my little Camilla Bloom bag. This vest slash gilet that Lottie got me. And then I've also got Max's coat that he got on eBay for £30, which is just stunning. And I'm excited to take you along with me today. I'll try and film as much as I possibly can. Yay, okay, bye. Sorry. As you know, earlier today, I went to the Crafts Council with my friend Zenab and we went to the Cotton Labour Land and Body Exhibition. It's free to attend and it's on until the end of March and I would highly recommend it. It's all about cotton, the material that we all are familiar with and its links between Britain and South Asia and colonialism and the history of the fibre. And it's a really, really fascinating exhibition. I would really recommend it. I did want to do a little bit of a taste test because Zena very kindly bought me and Max some gajak to try, which is from Pakistan. Her dad bought it back. It's a sesame peanut and jaggery biscuit. And I have the difficult task of trying to save some for Max. So I'm gonna like vaguely cut it in half because I know she really wants him to try it as well. Mmm! I did not expect it to be that texture. Mmm. Oh yeah, it's really sweet, which I love. The sesame comes through very, very strongly. It's absolutely delicious. Zen Ab says you can only have like two bites at a time, but I could eat this all very easily. It's like, rich, very sweet, flaky. The sesame comes through really strongly, which I love. You know I'm a tahini girl. Kind of got stuck in your teeth, which I also love. Delicious. Mmm. It reminds me of sesame snap biscuits. Mmm. Also has a bit of a nougat feel to it as well. It's similar to something called Vevri, which when I've had has been small and round. Um, I can't figure out a way of writing that in Roman letters to make it come up on Google. And my mum hasn't sent me the Urdu spelling, so can't show you a picture, but uh, yeah, those are small and round and Gajak is usually rectangular. I hope you enjoy. It's very sticky and sweet. Mm. Mm. It's lovely. Gadrak's a winner for me. Yum. Have you done many workshops before? This is my first one. Is it? So any feedback is good feedback. Yeah. yeah. And then you can use oh, that. Look at that. To... That's looking really good, Venetia. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so if it's easier. <laughs> if it's a different. No, it's the same looking from the top. Yeah. 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 into there, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through again. Hello, it's Tuesday morning and it's still pancake day. I went to the shops this morning and treated myself to my favourite soy yogurt. I don't know what it is about this one, but it's just so, so, so good. And it wasn't as expensive as I thought it would be. It was only £1.50. So, as you know, it's the small things. I 
had my pancakes that were delicious. They were very cakey today, which is my favourite. Um, and I did want to talk to you about my podcast episode that came out today. It's the season finale, and it is this episode with Tessa Khan. It's about having children in a climate crisis, and this episode is actually inspired by um, one of my subscribers on this YouTube channel who said, please, can you discuss this topic on YouTube? And then they kind of very sensitively said, if this isn't something that you feel talk comfortable talking about from your personal perspective, could you talk about it with someone else, perhaps in a podcast format? So this episode is very much inspired by the conversation that was happening under one of my YouTube videos. We do talk about eco-fascism and the overpopulation myth, which is vitally important to know about and to learn about. And Tessa talks about them really, really, really well and debunks the overpopulation myth. And then we also talk lots about the fossil fuel industry and what that means for the future of the planet and why it's so vitally important to join the fight against the fossil fuel industry, especially the Stop Rose Bank campaign, which I will leave linked in the description box. If you are someone who is kind of grappling with the idea about whether or not to have children during a climate crisis, um, know that you're not alone. I think this is something that a lot of people are thinking about. But overall, I would say that it's no one's decision but your own. And no one is in a position to judge you for whatever decision you come to or you have come to. And in the episode, we talk about reproductive rights. And to my shame, I think I have said on this channel... Um, have it not having children is the most sustainable thing you can do which I feel really embarrassed about now to be honest as is saying stuff on the internet and then growing up and changing your mind and thinking otherwise a lot of people around the world don't have the reproductive rights that we are used to and that's become more apparent than ever over the past couple of years um, with Roe v Wade and with various Tory politicians in the UK feeling the same about our reproductive rights here so of course I feel gross about what I said um, and the problem is so much greater than an individual's choice to have children know that whatever decision you have come to or you are coming to or you came to is your decision only if you're new to the podcast please do have a have a little look into it because I'm really proud of this past season we have the episode that I just spoke about I also speak to Poppy Okocha about gardening and growing and how that's a really great way to reconnect to nature. I also talk about wellness and the kind of wellness industry with Rena Raphael, which I know lots of you really, really enjoyed. I also talked about the whitewashing of yoga with Angie Tiwari and how we need to collectively decolonize yoga so that it doesn't just uplift white yoga teachers um we talk about it in a lot more depth than that and angie is incredible so i really hope you enjoy the episode i also speak to josephine phillips about how to start a sustainable fashion business which is great for anyone who is like a budding entrepreneur i also talk about the issue of fat phobia in fashion and of course size inclusivity with marielle elizabeth which is a really wonderful episode, marielle's incredible there's an episode on whether or not ethical billionaires exist with swati deepak uh, which is was just, I think, featured by the London School of Economics. I think they shared it. So it's really uh, like informative because Swati's amazing about billionaires and philanthropy and tax and um, whether or not such a thing as an ethical billionaire exists. And she adds like such brilliant nuance to the topic. So that's a, one of my favourite episodes from the season, actually. And then we started the season with Willow Defabar, who is the editor-in-chief of Atmos, which is one of my favourite climate publications and platforms. If I was you and you're new to the show, I would start with the first episode of the season and then work your way up to the end. I can't believe it's over because I said I want to make a podcast. I want the new series of the podcast to be with you for all of January and February because these, for me, are the hardest months. And now we're at the end of February, which means the podcast over is over, but spring is very much on the way. So, yeah. Yay. <laughs> Hello friends, um, I just put my dressing gown on because I'm very cold. I managed to have a fairly reasonably productive afternoon, just did some scripting for some upcoming videos and I'm about to put this all plants shepherd's pie in the oven. 
I don't feel 100% but I just, uh, I don't know if I'm like, I still feel like I'm teetering on the edge of something. I thought I may as well film my current situation. I was on the sofa and it was 10 o'clock and I was in a TikTok hole again. So I'm currently um, tinting my eyebrows and I'm also tidying my bathroom and it is a mess in here, but I'm like, no, like we're gonna, we're gonna get this done. We're gonna, we're gonna organize. Current situation is I'm cleaning my brushes, which I'm doing in this little pot, shampooed them, and then I'm going to condition them. And then I have just like lots of products laid out that I've just found in my little beauty cupboard that I want to just like use again. And I found some vitamin D from Retrition. And I was like, why aren't you taking that? If you got it, you may as well take it. I went, was going to my makeup bag and my makeup bag is like quite gritty at the bottom. I've had this for so many years now. And then I just found this kit that I got with my Invisalign, this little like perfectly clean pouch. So I'm gonna put all of my makeup in there. And yeah, it's, I mean, we're very much in the middle of this, but I'm gonna crack on and see how we go. Anything that doesn't deal with weight. Uh -huh. This may seem like a small methodological detail, but it's actually a huge deal about the fatness. This kind of rhetoric of sort of like... It I'm listening to Maintenance Phase, which is a podcast all about fat phobia and the diet industry. And I've learned so much from it and I'm continuing to learn from it. Just put this little face oil on from Neom and it's their nighttime face oil, it's got cranberry seed oil, apricot kernel oil and almond oil and it is so dreamy and I think it just smells like absolutely unreal and I think I might just run it through the ends of my hair as well because I'm due a hair wash. a little bit more tidy in, the, in these parts. Tidied the kitchen, my office, and my bathroom, and my little desk, little desk area. And I think I must be feeling better because I suddenly had this like surge of like, right, stop moping around, feeling sorry for yourself. Tidy up, because it does make me feel better. And now I know I'm going to go into tomorrow and just feel like calmer and hopefully more motivated. Although I'll check in with you in the morning about that. I'm now going to use my little pillow spray. Please excuse my hair. It's my first time using this. Ooh. Lovely. Lavender and chamomile. Perfect. Oh, that smells so good. Thanks for sticking with me today and I'll check in with you tomorrow. Good night. Oh, hello. Hello. My lips are so blue because I've just eaten a load of frozen blueberries, um, which always seem to be bluer than normal blueberries. Anyway, I feel like I've turned over a new leaf today, which I'm very grateful for. And I have been feeling much more energized today and much more motivated. It reminds me of my podcast episode with Poppy Acopcha. This a whole video is me being like, listen back to my podcast. But we do talk about it in that episode. And also the first episode with Willow Defobar about how like nature reminds us that like not everything is linear, it's circular. And there are gonna be moments where you rest and heal and aren't so abundant in production. Um, anyway. So I did exercise this morning, which has made me feel much clearer in my mind. And I have also been for a lovely sort of half hour walk, which was really, really nice. Um, 
and yeah, I'm just feeling, I'm feeling much better. So long may this continue. And I also just keep reminding myself that it's the 1st of March today. Spring is really, really on the way. And ahead of us lies spring and summer and much brighter, brighter times. So that makes me really happy. Um, I'm going to go and edit this video now and... I am going to keep filming. I do want to do more YouTube videos than I have been. So thank you for your patience. Um, I will try and make a few more videos. And I will see you in the next one. Thank you for being here. See you soon. Bye.